Hello, my name is Gray. And my name is Crystal. And this is Busty Asian Beauties, a supernatural commentary podcast where I, someone who has seen this show several times, and I, someone who only knows the show through social media, discuss every single episode of Supernatural from start to finish. Also, we are both Asian. Both Asian! So for today's episode, we will be discussing Season 2, Episode 5, Simon Said. Written by Ben Edland, directed by Tim Ayakofano. Is this Bedland's first episode? Yes, it's. I think uh, it's Bedland's first episode. I wish they episode. fired him afterwards, but I guess I, at least we got 620 out of it. I don't. Like, uh, I mean, I think we'll get into it later, but you don't like this episode for very specific reasons. I hate this reasons. episode. <laughs> yeah, I don't share the sentiment, so. Yeah. I, but but I don't really like the episode, so I'm not gonna argue for it that much. So if someone mm-hmm. is out there being a diehard fan of this episode, there, there's no representation for you in yeah, this podcast. Yeah, sorry. You should probably yeah, just sorry. come back next week. <laughs> yeah. So before going in, Crystal, what did you know about this episode? Uh, I knew that we were going to meet... Andy, who is a weed smoking boyfriend with mind control powers, but uh, he's another one of the psychic kids, but he's generally chill and doesn't want to hurt anyone. I also knew that he had an evil twin, and also that when Sam and Dean find him, like, they're both sort of trying to find evidence that Sam can be good or is destined to be evil. And that's sort of the underlying emotional current. Okay, so we start with um, this man walking down the street. He's very jolly. He's saying hi to people. His name is Dr. Jennings. And it seems to be like a small town where people all know each other. His cell phone rings and he picks it up. And then we, while on the call, we start seeing visions of something that something being dr jennings shooting down a place he hangs up and goes to a a gun shop i guess well it's not a gun shop it's like just a shop with guns in it which is shocking to me yeah um apparently it's a sports equipment shop so i guess if you're in a state where Hunting, hunting is a, is a common sport. Yeah. It would just be a section in the store. Yeah, I guess so. And uh, Dr. Jennings comes up to a guy and asks to look at the gun. At first, the guy hesitates because I guess Dr. Jennings isn't the type to go hunting. But he gives him the gun anyway, a turkey hunting gun. And Dr. Jennings is, you know, looking at the gun and everything, acting all casual and asks for what the shells for this gun is and the man gives it to him and then he starts loading up the fucking gun and at first the man stops him because this is illegal but dr jennings shoots the guy and then shoots himself and yeah as as we see the blood splatter of dr jennings head we fade into Sam standing over a sink, washing his face. I love the visual of like when someone is in distress, they wash their face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like of course he's yeah. washing his face in this moment. He's running his wet hands through his wet hair like go girl. Uh, Sam is in distress. He obviously just saw this vision. Dean comes into the bathroom <laughs> what a what a weird scene. Why not lock your door, Sam? He was just washing his face. Yeah, you lock the door if you pee and you keep the door unlocked if you're just washing your face to have a hot girl breakdown. So Dean comes in the bathroom and he's like, oh, yep, yep, Sammy, we have to go. And then he notices that Sam is not okay. And he goes, oh, what <laughs> is happening? 
Also, when Dean comes in, you see him through the reflection in the mirror, and it's all angled weird, and he looks so silly and goofy. So, we're in the Impala. Dean's driving again, boo. And they're talking about the vision. Sam apparently wants them to go to the roadhouse to suss out if the demon is involved in this and where he might be, but Dean says that going to the roadhouse might not be a good idea because there's going to be hunters there. And he says, I don't know if going in and announcing that you're some supernatural freak with a demonic connection is the best thing, okay? And Sam says, so I'm a freak now? And Dean, with the older brother instincts of never being able to comfort anyone and making everything worse, <laughs> slaps him and goes, you've always been a freak. <laughs> oh, so fun. Also, this is quite similar to their conversation at the end of Skin, where Sam says that at Stanford, deep down, I never really fit in. And Dean yeah. says, that's because you're a freak. And then, well, I'm a freak too. Except here, now, Sam's the only freak. <laughs> Sorry, Sammy. <laughs> so we go to the roadhouse. And Joe, we see Joe playing uh, an arcade game, a shooter arcade game, as a man watches. And she hits every single deer in the shooting game and the guy's like oh you're really good and then hands over um a couple of bucks and uh, apparently there's like a bet going on and as joe walks away ellen comes in and says you got the hustle bro and then shows the high score of the arcade game and it's all joe fantastic go joe mm -hmm. i love joe this episode Did, what what are your thoughts about her she didn't get that much time, I suppose, and I wish she had more to do than look at Dean, but, I mean, she's fun. Is, is Jill our first... Yeah, 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 yeah. She's like the first, character. like, she's like the first young recurring female character. Like, the Sam and yeah. Dean's age. Yeah. That's true, the rest of them get kissed or fucked once and then never spoken to again. I mean, I guess you could argue that Meg is a recurring young woman, but she's oh, yeah. actually a centuries old. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess, like, she, she wasn't a love interest, so. Joe is. And, like, the, 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 a weird question, I guess, but, like, do you, do you ship Dean and Joe? Um... I think that Joe is a lesbian. <laughs> mm, That's what I think. I, I kind of see the appeal. And I feel like if the the environment, i.e. the fandom, at the time wasn't so misogynistic, like, it could have been a thing, you know? I like the idea of Dean one-sidedly pining for Joe. Because later when he's singing the song in the car, I'm like, maybe he will become better just by liking her and just, and like, being less, like, aggressively masculine. But I don't really see any appeal in them, like, actually getting together. Yeah, it's about the slow burn. <laughs> the slow burn that never stops. Well, that does stop and then stops burning and never happens, yes. I feel like I should be defending Dean Joe in this podcast because, like, I do like them. I do like the idea of Dean Joe, but um, I, I like I don't like it that much to fucking fight yeah. for my life for it. So, <laughs> anyway, um, Dean comes in with Sam. <laughs> I too am in this episode. But... No. So Dean says hi to Joe. And Joe makes a joke that's like, you can't stay away, huh? And Dean's like, yeah, how you doing, Joe? And then Sam comes in and is like, where's Ash? And uh, Joe's like, oh, in the back room, also, I'm okay. Dean apologizes and says, oh, we're in a timetable right now, so my bad. And we go to the back room where Ash is, and Sam and Dean knock. Sam is saying, Ash, Ash, and uh, the... 
there is a wooden sign by the door that says mm-hmm. Dr. Badass is in. Yeah, Dr. Badass is in. And Dean takes notice and then follows suit and says, Hey, Dr. Badass! And the door opens. And I guess... I mean, we don't see the lower half of Ash, but I guess he's naked. We don't get to see if his ass is bad or not. Dean and Sam avert their eyes as Ash sniffs them up. Did, did you notice that? Omegaverse. <laughs> oh, no! This is our second uh, episode with, in a row with mentions of Omegaverse. I feel like and I'll do it again (laughs) people are gonna stop listening to us I don't like Omegaverse and I think that the premise is inherently flawed please come back as soon as Sam and Dean say that they need Ash's help Ash puts on his pants and they go to sit in the middle of the roadhouse. Oh, I forgot to say, the roadhouse is buzzing tonight, baby. Yeah. It's it's full of people. Business is doing well. Go, Ellen. I yeah. support a girl boss winning. Is that what they say? <laughs> is that is that the phrase? I, I, I think you love I to see a girl see boss win. Yeah, exactly. I love to see a girl boss win. Yeah, so Ash has his laptop open and... Sam's asking him to look up the logo from the bus that he saw in his vision, the Blue Ridge bus line. Apparently, it's only in Guthrie, Oklahoma. It's fascinating what Sam remembers in the visions. Like, do you think right. it's ingrained in his brain or is it just like like seeing things, you know? Like, do you think his brain is like just seeing the bus line and like his brain is doing a cinematography thing where like the bus line is important sam like to remember the bus line or do you think he's seeing it like how you see your real life hmm i think that what we see on screen is what sam sees in his mind Mm. so yeah i think we get the zoom in on the bus line You'd think that Sam would notice that it'd be good to remove the cell phone from that guy, though, but he forgot that part. So, Sam asks Ash to check if Guthrie, Oklahoma has any demonic signs or omens, and Ash is like, why do you think that the demon's here? And Sam and Dean are both like, we're not gonna say you're psychic. So, so, So Dean's just like, just check, okay? There's no signs there. So then Sam decides to ask about a house fire in 1983 that starts in a baby's nursery when they're six months old. Uh, He bribes Ash with a beer to look it up, and Ash does. Meanwhile, Joe is at the jukebox, and she plays the (laughs) song... Can't fight this feeling by yeah. Rio Speedwagon. I don't know R-E-O, this song, but you Speedwagon. seem to care. You don't R-E-O know this song? No. This is like I think this is very famous in the Philippines, mm. or like it's very famous with my dad. <laughs> 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 I, like I started cheering and crying, and <laughs> when when the song played, like yes, go because it's so pointed too. Like especially I guess when you know the lyrics, it's like. The, the this song is about like removing all inhibitions you know like oh. <laughs> so it's like i thought she was making fun of dean like he was actively teasing him so i thought the song choice was very good dean makes a judgmental face and he goes are you a speed wagon and joe says damn right kevin cronin sings it from the heart and Dean says he sings it from the hair. There's a difference. Uh, and I think I wrote down here, oh, that's why Queen is not in any of the supernatural soundtracks or title references. And also because they're gay, but also because they have long hair. Ah, oh, fucking Led Zeppelin has, they have, they all have long hair. Okay, then that's I don't get the, it. <laughs> that's just the, that's just the look of the genre at the time. 
then why isn't Queen- I, I mean, I guess it's because Eric Kripke is homophobic. Is that why Queen is not featured on Supernatural at all? I, I, I fucking bet. Okay. Yeah. So, Eric Kripke, pay for your sins. <laughs> Joe asks Dean about the profile that Ash is looking for and mentions how she knows that Mary died in the same way. Dean tries to shoo her off, but she says, I could help. But Dean says, nah, we have to handle this one ourselves. Besides, if I ran off with you, I think your mother might kill me. Uh, Ellen gives him a little glare <laughs> by the bar, and Dean makes a little scared face. And Joe's teasing him about being afraid of Ellen. And as this is happening, Sam runs up to Dean and goes, like, we have a match, we have to go. So they head out, leaving poor Joe behind. So can't fight this feeling anymore, like, keeps on playing, right, as the Impala drives off. But now it's Dean who's saying it. A part of me is like, oh, Dean is singing, and then another part of me is like, Jensen Ackles is singing. Jensen Ackles! <laughs> Radio <laughs> company, get the fuck out of here! <laughs> should, we, should we do a bit about <laughs> Radio Comedy's music? <laughs> we could do a line-by-line -line analysis of Watching Over Me, except there's literally nothing to analyze, and it's not a cast song, because cast deserves better. So, yeah, I guess we have nothing. Anyway, as Dean is singing, he's singing... He, he sings right before the chorus. And I was like, oh, well, that sucks that, he, that Sam stops him right before the good bits. But it also means that Dean knows the song well enough that he knows the non-chorus lines. Everybody! He's probably listened to it a lot. I don't! Everybody knows the song. <laughs> I don't! I knew this song when I was fucking four. Sam, Sam, Sam stops him by saying, "You're kidding, right?" And Dean is like, "Oh no, I heard this song somewhere. Like, I can't get it out of my head." And then asks Sam, "Like, oh, what, what do you have?" And Sam says, "Andrew Gallagher, born in '83, like me, lost his mother in a nursery fire exactly six months later." also like me. Uh, they talk about whether the demon killed his, his mom, and Sam's like, yeah. And Dean asks, like, how do you know to look for this guy? And Sam says, oh, the premon- <laughs> He says every premonition I've had. And like, you've had one premonition outside of your family, Sam. <laughs> but this is like the part where Sam reminds Dean of Max Miller. And it's like, oh yeah, because Dean sure have forgotten about Max at this point. <laughs> Uh, Sam says, like, every premonition I've had is about someone who was like me. And Dean, like, gets up in arms about Sam comparing himself to Max because Max is, you know, a murderer. But Sam is like, no, the point is he was killing people and I'm seeing someone kill people, so it may be a similar thing. They talk about where to find Andy. Uh, Sam says he doesn't have an address. And he has so many bills that, he, that are unpaid, but the debt collectors just let Andy walk away. So that's like, ooh, why is that? What a king. So we go to a diner or cafe, and there's a waitress there named Tracy who's talking to Sam and Dean. She tells them that debt collectors often come by to talk to Andy, but they always leave. Dean lies about them being lawyers representing Andy's aunt who left him an inheritance. And Sam starts asking around about Andy. Uh, Tracy reveals that she and Andy have some kind of history. And then some other random guy swoops in. He's like, Andy? Andy kicks ass, man. He can get you into anything. He even got me backstage at Aerosmith once. And Dean starts making an impressed little face, like, good taste in music, because, mm. as we learn later, no? Is it bad taste in music? Is that the face? Do you know the song, I Don't Wanna Miss a Thing? No. Oh my god, Crystal, what do you know? <laughs> Misty. <laughs> 
Air, I don't think Aerosmith is a good like I don't think Dean would be like oh Aerosmith yeah of course okay I guess just because he seemed to like Andy a lot already before they even saw the van I assumed that he was impressed by this in some way no I'm not impressed so <laughs> but alas maybe Dean is yeah. What a what what a weird thing to do that like he doesn't like Ario Speedwagon but likes Aerosmith. He's a weird little man. Oh, so Tracy tells them that they can find Andy on Orchard Street, um, at the house with a van with a barbarian queen riding a polar bear painted on the side. What a king. Okay, so Sam and Dean are in the or are in Orchard Street and. Dean is admiring the fucking van. And it's a pretty cool van. Okay, like, yeah. here's the thing. Uh, sometimes I, like, look at myself and I wonder, did I really watch season two? Because, <laughs> because like, I've forgotten a lot of it. And sometimes I just question it. Like, I know I did, but sometimes I question it. And then I watch this episode and I saw that van and I was like oh I've definitely seen that van before I've definitely watched this episode before and it's and that scene later on where um Andy asks tell the truth and Dean starts like speaking without the mm. hesitation like that scene too I remember it so vividly so I guess we have proven once and for all that I have seen Supernatural congratulations <laughs> thank you and I do remember it, so good for me. Dean is complimenting the van, and there's this really funny shot where as soon as Dean is like, oh, that's a sweet van, and then he turns to Sam, who is looking like the most done person in the world. Sam says that Andrew Gallagher is the second guy they've found, and every single guy they find that's kind of like Sam are killing people. And Dean starts this whole thing where he's completely on Andy's side. This entire episode, it happens. He's like, Andy might be good, might be innocent. We know why he's doing this. It's because he's yeah. trying to placate Sam and himself that, hey, just because you have these demonic visions doesn't mean that you are demonic in nature. This is where uh, Sam brings up you know, the thing the demon said that like he had plans for me and children like me. Maybe this is his plan. Maybe we're all a bunch of psychic freaks. Maybe we're all supposed to be dot 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 and things like killers. So the demon wants you out there killing with your minds. Is that it? You're not a murderer, Sam. You don't have it in your bones. Sam's like, well, actually, I do actually kill, like, a lot of things, so... <laughs> and he's like, uh, those things were asking for it. There's a difference. Which is such a... Was, like, I get that he's trying to placate Sam, right? But, like, yeah. you just had that moral dilemma two episodes ago. Where yeah. Like, oh, my God. What if what the things that we killed were not actually worth killing or whatever? And now you're like, eh, they all deserve to die. It's all right, Sammy. It's all right. It, it's fine. It's all right. <laughs> like, come on, Dean. As, as they are having this conversation, a man comes out of an apartment building. It's Andy. He's wearing um, pajamas and a very nice satin robe. Nice because it has dragons on it. So this guy yeah. likes likes a big um statement piece it's a whole thing like andy is saying goodbye to a woman who is on top of the apartment and it's you know she's blowing him a kiss uh andy keeps on walking and comes across the guy that we saw from earlier dr jennings and sam recognizes the guy so he goes to follow dr jennings while dean goes to follow andy so the thing about the woman in the window, right yeah. after we see her, we see Andy say hi to a man at the st on the street and talk him into giving Andy his coffee, right? And the fact that this all happens in the same sequence and the vibe we're supposed to get is like, he's very well liked and gets everything he wants because he has secret powers just makes me wonder 
how much this woman consented to sex with him? At this point, we're supposed to think that. I think it gets shown later on in the episode that he is like better than that. Like, like, like he said, well, like he doesn't use his powers. Like the girl, you know, the girl. He says he's later. never used his powers on Tracy. Yeah. That doesn't mean he hasn't used them on anyone else, though. Yeah, but uh, like to defend him, I guess. Like, mm-hmm. I, I, I think the the episode is purposefully framing him as yeah. potentially dangerous, and at this point, so you are supposed to get that vibe. But mm. the episode then like comes back later on. And it's like no, he's a good guy. He won't do that. So mm, yeah, I suppose. Dean starts following Andy in the Impala because Andy gets in the van while Sam's following Doctor Jennings. <laughs> so funny that he was like, "I'm just gonna follow this guy in my creaky ass, old ass, giant ass car," and mm-hmm. he was like, "This is gonna work out. It's fine." <laughs> He doesn't have powers or anything. I'll be chill. Dean just <laughs> yeah. really wanted to look at that van some more. As as a car fucker, Dean's blood was not in his brain. It had gone down south. Andy notices that Dean's following him and comes over and he says, Hey, they have a conversation where there's both cheery and smiling so much. And he's complimenting them, Paula. And Dean's like giggling and twirling his hair and being like, Yeah, I just rebuilt her. <laughs> yeah. There are fascinating <sighs> shots of Dean's hands that I didn't know what to make out of. Like, it's because he, he was he tucking puts, a gun. Yeah, back he was into tucking a gun in his jacket. And then, like, it it goes back again where he's like slapping his thigh, like, in, in enthusiasm. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> Well, okay, <laughs> I don't. I don't know what to think of this, but proceed. I will say that Dean and Andy fuck in Bad Moon Rising. <laughs> for real? Yeah. Good for them. Yeah, good for them. Right in the middle of their conversation, Andy's like, "Yeah, um, hey, can I have the car?" And Dean, smiling, goes, "Sure, man." And he just gets out and goes, "Hop right in. There you go." And he's just smiling and waving until Andy's farther away, and then he's standing in the street looking like a total loser. Andy's an icon for that, thank you. I- this is what's fascinating to me, that even after that, he was like, he's not a bad guy. <laughs> like, he I really know. does love Sam so much, and he's willing to, like, placate Sam so much, and he's like, he stole my car, it's fine, Sam, and inside he's, like, <laughs> fucking crying. <laughs> Sometimes he can be a good brother. Sam is following Dr. Jennings, and we see what happened in the vision, which is he gets the car, and he's heading to the sporting goods center. When Sam goes there, he pulls the emergency alarm. So Dr. Jennings turns away, which is a weird choice, I feel. Like, he was like, oh, um, the sporting goods center is on fire so i'm turning away like do you don't you feel like if he was being mind controlled as strongly as you know uh we see later on like he would just keep on going i guess i just assumed that anson gave him very specific instructions about what to do so if the state of the store changes at all then the instructions no longer apply yeah yeah Maybe. Like a computer program, you know? Like, oh, error. Yeah, so Sam stands in front of the store and is just looking. And he drives by with the fucking Impala and he's like, oh my god. (laughs) Dr. Jennings, meanwhile, gets another phone call. But Sam doesn't see it because Sam is calling Dean about the car. And Dean makes a Star Wars reference, you know, it's a whole thing. And as he's calling Dean, he turns his head and Dr. Jennings steps in front of a bus. And he dies. R.I.P. Sorry, bro. So we see the ambulance put Dr. Jennings away and Sam and Dean watch. 
Sam's looking really guilty, and he says, like, I thought that he was gonna be okay after I kept him out of the gun store. I should have stayed with him. The fact that they're having this conversation, <laughs> like, right there, <laughs> right next to the body. <laughs> The cops are overhearing this random guy being like, I should have stopped him. He, I, I thought he was past it. Like, come on, dude. So we're back at the diner. And Andy comes in looking really upset. Uh, he goes over to Tracy and tells her that Dr. Jennings is dead. We don't ever really learn what Andy's relationship to Dr. Jennings is in his adult life at all, do we? Yeah. I think he, like, because it's a small town where everyone knows everyone. Mm. Yeah, so it's like he just likes oh, yeah. him as a dude who he sees sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. But no one else seems to care, right? Like, Tracy's just like, I'm sorry, like, I know this hurts you personally. Like, she doesn't care that much. He and Dr. Jennings had to have been, like, friends closer than him and Tracy, at least. Uh, okay, so... Annie tells her that he was upset and wanted to see her. And they start holding hands. Meanwhile, the guy from the first scene in the diner is washing dishes and probably seeing all of this. Tracy tells him that she misses him and then tells him that there are some guys looking for him and Andy gets alarmed. Yeah. The thing is, we know Andy, right? So we know yeah. that he didn't do the killings. Yeah. But the concept of the like prior we think it's him so it's mm. like this guy literally killed this man just so he can get it on with a girl <laughs> wild i i love that implication like i love that that's where supernatural goes because it's like you you do feel so much contempt for the guy when you when you just like have that in front of you like at the beginning mm. right before you know yeah. what's actually going on I don't know. I, I, I really like that that's the implication. Yeah. So Sam and Dean are walking. Just, they're just walking in the street. They're like, okay, we don't have a car. Let's just take a fucking walk. And they see Baby. So what? The, how do you feel, by the way, about calling the car Baby? I thought it was the stupidest, funniest thing I'd ever heard when I heard about it before I was in the Supernatural fandom, but now I, like, I'm used to it now, so I don't even have yeah. any thoughts on it. But, like, Dean that's absolutely fucked baby. that car. Yeah, that's literally Baby. That's literally his baby. Anyway, he goes up to Baby, and he's like, oh, he left the keys inside, so they were able to hop in. And Dean figures out that this guy... Um, only does mind control using verbal commands. And Sam says, oh, the doctor was just on the phone, so maybe he commanded the doctor to throw himself in front of the bus. And Dean's like, hmm, I don't know, maybe. And Sam's like, excuse me? And Dean, this is where Dean starts his thing again, where he's like, I don't know, he seems like an innocent guy. Uh, they go down to track this guy. I think that it was a really smart choice to have children shouldn't play with dead things right before this episode where Dean is so ready to accuse everyone of everything based off of no evidence. Yeah. So you can really see how much he is in denial this episode. Yeah. And I mean, he's, again, he's vindicated again, but <laughs> if he wasn't, he would have still been like, you know... Like, no, yeah. this Andy guy, you know? His convictions are really based on fucking subjective as fuck uh, reasons. Yeah. Where's your logic and rationality, Dean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Sam and Dean approach Andy's van in the middle of the fucking street. In the middle of the fucking street, <laughs> they're crowbarring this guy's... A fucking van open in the middle of the fucking street. Uh, so they open it and we see the interior of the car, which is it has a disco ball, 
There's uh, fur rugs everywhere. There's a tiger on the side of the van. And uh, there's a fucking bong. That, that's yeah. what it's called, right? Yeah. Yep. Anyway, Dean is very impressed. Do we think that Ash and Andy would be a good ship? Ash and Andy. You know what I thought of? Well, what? okay, I'll answer that first and then I say what else I thought okay. of. Um, I think Ash and Andy would be pretty cool. Like, they have the same vibes, but it would be like too much of the same thing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like, they're both geniuses sense. who are like rock and roll baby you know so mm-hmm. you know what i thought like i thought what? when when andy was in the back seat i was like you know what should have happened they should have taken on andy under their wing and like it's a yeah. whole thing sam dean and andy and then when Cass comes <laughs> oh andy and Cass would be a good pair right they would be like the back seat boys and <laughs> They're they're just hanging out in the back seat. You know, Cass is super straight laced and Andy's like party on Cass and it's a whole thing. And I thought it would have been fascinating. Yeah, that would be cute. And I feel like it'd be interesting to see them in an in, in end verse as well. Yeah. Exactly. I have no idea how Andy's story ends. Like I've forgotten. Um, don't most of the psychic kids die in the Hunger Games near the end of season two? Yeah, but I don't know him, like what happens to him specifically. Like, does he have anything else happen to him before he dies? You know, mm. shit like that. So, well, he's I gotta know. fuck Can't Ash, say. Dean, and Cass first. That's what. Yeah, you gotta fuck Cass first, bro. Me. <laughs> My lifelong <laughs> dream. Uh,. Anyway, Dean is very impressed. Uh, he likes the tiger. Sam picks up the books, and it's Hegel. It's Kant. It's Wittgenstein, and he's also very impressed. And Dean picks up the bong, and they're also very impressed. <laughs> yeah. What are? You, what is the normal size of a bong? Smaller than that. <laughs> Way smaller. I'd say so. Yeah. Yeah. Like, How does a bong work? <laughs> I well, let me don't Google it. actually know. How does a bong work? I think you put the weed in like the circular part at the end and you like put the fire through the tube at the bottom and then you breathe in and the smoke rises. I have no idea what this redditor is saying. Oh, it's like, you know, in pipes when... I, I, there, I, God, I am such a guy, you know, like, I, I'm into Led Zeppelin, I had a pipe face, <laughs> but, but you know how in pipes, like, the longer it is, the cooler the smoke gets before it reaches your mouth? Oh. So, like, it's, I think it's the same logic here that, like, the bong exists to cool down the smoke before it reaches your mouth. So, like, the longer the bong is, the cooler the smoke. <laughs> cool. Yeah, so Sam and Dean are sitting in the Impala. It's parked. They're waiting for Andy or just talking, maybe. Dean's complaining about the food. And Sam's trying to figure out why Andy would kill the doctor. And Dean's like, if it is Andy. And Sam's like, bro, like, stop it. Obviously, the doctor who is mind-controlled to die, who lives in the town with the mind-controller, was killed by the mind-controller. Dean just says, I don't think he's got it in him, that's all. Uh, and Dean says, you're not right about this. And before Sam can question him further, Andy appears in the window. And he asks them, why are you following me? But there's some kind of effect. Yeah. Uh, do you know, what is the effect? It's like, um, like it echoes, right? Like, why are you following yeah. me? me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. To show that he is compelling them. So Sam starts lying, going with the lawyer thing. And Andy yells, tell the truth. 
And Dean goes, we hunt demons. And and he goes, what? And Dean goes, demons and spirits. And I go, oh my god, Cass and free to be you and me, Cor? Dean keeps talking. He says, Sam's my brother. Sam's like, Dean, shut up. And Dean says, I'm trying. But he keeps smiling and talking. He says, He's psychic, kind of like you. Well, not really like you, but see, he thinks you're a murderer, and he's afraid that he's going to become one himself, because you're all part of something that's terrible, and I hope to hell that he's wrong, but I'm starting to get a little scared that he might be right. And, and he just goes, fuck this, leave me alone. And Dean goes, okay. But Sam gets out of the car and starts following Andy. Andy keeps ordering Sam to go away but the powers don't work on him. Sam keeps talking. He says that he knows about Andy's powers, and it started about a year ago, right after you turned 22, huh? Little stuff at first, and then you got better at controlling it. Andy's getting pretty scared at this moment. I mean, I would be as well. How, do you see how big Sam is in this episode? He's so tall. He's so fucking big. What the fuck? I, I guess, like, we're used to seeing him beside Dean, where he's just a little bit big. But beside Andy, Andy is, like, a foot smaller than him. Yeah, Andy is a short king. So he tells Andy that his mom also died in a fire. He has abilities, and they're connected. And then he asks, why did you tell the doctor to walk in front of a bus? And Andy is shocked. He says, what? I didn't. And then we get another Sam vision time. There's a blonde woman at a gas station who is gassing up her car. She gets a phone call. There's like a vision of fire. And then after she agrees to whoever's on the phone, she starts covering herself in gasoline and then pulls out a cigarette lighter, says it's gonna be okay, and then lights herself on fire. Woo! God, what a visual. The, the, the yeah. fire here looks so good. Like, it genuinely looks like she's fucking immolating herself. And like what Dean says later, like, uh, you can still smell it. It's such a visceral thing to say that I was like, I, I feel like I was taken to this place and I saw this woman self-emulate. What, what a scene. Yeah, it's pretty good. Sam collapses and Dean catches him. And, and Andy was like, I didn't do anything to him. <laughs> Sam, Sam, Sam relates to Dean that uh, he saw a woman burn alive at a gas station. And then they see a fire truck pass by. Sam tells Dean to go follow that fire truck. And so he does. In the fire station, Dean calls Sam. And the woman is fucking dead. And she's been dead for like a couple of minutes already. So when Dean arrived, like, that's when she died. So... This is not even a head start premonition. This is like it happened pretty much the moment the situation happened. And Dean says that Andy was with Sam when the emulation happened, when the phone call with the woman happened. So it must not be Andy. So Dean yeah. uh, says that he'll dig around some more. Sam and Andy continue talking. Andy tells Sam that his visions suck. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> he's like, we wait, we all have powers. All of us who this thing happened to, we all have powers. And I have this amazing power that makes me feel like I won the fucking lottery. And also, like, also if he just goes to the lottery and he was like, yeah, he win the lottery. Like, he could literally win the lottery. So, like, this guy's fucking solved, you know? And Sam's <laughs> visions are literally, I see people die. <laughs> like, he does get he did get the end of he did get the short, short end, of, end, the end stick. of the stick wow i love a metaphor anyway uh they continue talking this one is interesting this line is interesting andy says like it was a gift the mind thing and then sam asks but you still live in a van i don't get it 
You could have anything you ever wanted. And Andy said, I mean, I got everything I need. I thought we could linger on that for a bit. What did you think of that line? What do you think that Sam would do if he had Andy's powers? Yeah, exactly. That's like the question, right? right? Like, would he... Like, would he just tell vampires to like, hey, just die? <laughs> I think I think that would be well, an efficient... No, I think it'd be more... Now that he knows about Lenore, it'd be like, hey, just stick to cows from now on. Yeah. The, the whole point of this thing is like Sam is comparing himself to Andy, right? And he's yeah. like, you have this opportunity for a normal life, in a, right. a life better than normal even. Why you're settling to live like me, like a nomadic lifestyle in a car. If Sam had these powers at 22, then when Dean came over, he would just tell Dean to go away and then we wouldn't have to watch 15 seasons of Supernatural. I don't think he would do that. I don't know. It's just, it's fascinating that the way Sam phrases it, like you can have everything you've ever wanted. And the reply is, I have everything I need. So are we supposed to think that of Sam? Like, is that what the story is trying to tell us? That like, Sam's got everything he needs, so he doesn't have to pursue the things that he wants, which is like a fucked up thing to say, right? Yeah. I don't know, because there's not really that much focus on Sam's hopes and dreams this episode, so it's hard to tell if they are saying anything. When that scene happened, I was like, why this line in this episode? It feels out of place. Like, it feels significant because it feels out of place, you know? Mm hmm. Anyway, Sam asks, so you're not really a killer? Andy says, I've been trying to tell you that. And he's like, you know, very playful now. So that's cute. Mm. And Sam says, that's good. That means there's hope for the both of us. Mm. Dean shows up and says that the person who died, her name was Holly Beckett. And apparently Dean called Ash to run a background check on her. And she gave birth when she was 18 year old, 18 years old back in 1983 on the same day that Andy was born. So we find out that Andy was adopted. Dean seems really mad that he never brought that up. Like, who cares? Like, why would that be relevant? So they think that Holly might be Andy's birth mother. So Dean says that he couldn't get a copy of the birth records because they're sealed in the county office and Andy's like, well, <laughs> screw that. They're at the records office and they have access to all the files. Andy's telling the security guard, like, everything's fine, go get copy. And then he says, these aren't the droids you're looking for. Is that a Star Wars reference or something? I mean, I assume so. Right, yeah, continuing Dean's Obi-Wan Kenobi thing. Dean is very happy at this slide. He's like smiling and going, awesome. He d he wants to fuck this man. I didn't see it that way, but I respect your opinion. <laughs> Thank you. So they confirm that Holly Beckett is Andy's birth mother and that Dr. Jennings was her doctor who also oversaw the adoption. And then Sam, the dramatic bitch, finally reveals, oh, I think who- I think I know who killed them. Holly Beckett gave birth to twins. Dun dun dun! <laughs> I can't believe Supernatural's doing an evil twin storyline. Like, it- it could work, but, like, it's very funny. <laughs> Do you know about the other uh, evil twin storyline in Supernatural? Arthur Ketch and... Yeah. <laughs> What's the other guy? The other not know. actual guy? <laughs> Amazing. Ketch is like the worst character in Supernatural. That's probably not true. But he is my most beloved character in supernatural and when he every time he comes back i'm like let's let's just get it over with guys let's, let's just fucking kill this guy and he never dies oh i mean he does Ugh. die but fuck that guy 
But yeah. his his um twin, evil twin line is so fucking funny. So, Andy is freaking out. He's in shock. He says, "I have an evil twin." Yeah, <laughs> Andy, I'm really sorry. Holly put Andy and his brother Ansem up for adoption. His brother's name is Anson Weems, and apparently he lives in this town. Dean is printing a photo of him from the DMV, and he looks at it and he goes, oh, jeez, basically. So he hands the picture over to Andy, who's in shock. Yeah. I just want to say that, like, it's fascinating that they conclude, like, we realize in this episode, right, that Mary dying is not, like, a, not a blood thing. Like, it's not like you birth this child and then mm-hmm. because I feed him demon blood, you also die. It's a matter of who's there. So, like, why is yeah. it all the mothers then? <laughs> like, yeah. I'm pretty sure a yeah. dad was there one time. Zazel's just a misogynist. Literally a misogynist. Okay, the only way for these children to survive is if they had two dads. <laughs> Zazel would just not bother. <laughs> Maybe that's what happens with the evil twin. <laughs> so true. We don't see the photo, but we do go immediately to Weber from uh, the diner. If you don't recall, which I didn't, I was like, who the fuck is this guy? He looks like um Frodo from Lord of the Rings. <laughs> and he does, doesn't he? Yeah, his eyes, I can see it. Yeah. And I was like, why are we why are we going to Frodo right now? And apparently it's the guy from the diner earlier who was like, Oh, the Aerosmith concert, blah blah blah. So he, it's this guy and he's talking to Tracy. And Ah oh, Yeah. I, I, this yeah. sucks to talk about, like, the, the, the next couple of scenes after this. Yeah. But, uh, Weber is talking to Tracy about Andy, and he's asking, like, how she feels about him these days. Apparently, Tracy and Andy were together before. He's asking if there's still something there, if they were ever serious. And then Tracy was like, um, no, and then she was about to leave. Weber stops him and says, tell the truth, and it has the same echo effect as the what we heard with Andy. Sam and Dean are driving in the Impala, and Andy's in the back seat, and he's doing the exact same pose that Cass does at some point. Aww. And I, this is like the moment where I was like, Andy and Cass could have been a thing, and I've been so happy. And in in a better universe, Destiel is nothing compared to Andy Steel. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, Sam asks, like, what do you know about this guy, Weber? Andy says, he acted like he was my best friend in the world. Like, kind of weird. He tries too hard. Sam starts having a vision again. The vision is... We see Tracy, and she's wearing... Uh, like a nightgown but the really short one and she's walking to a dam and she's standing over the edge of the dam and then she fucking jumps so yeah and she's also crying the whole time which I think makes the scene a lot more disturbing because the other deaths that we all saw they were so calm they kept saying everything's okay everything's okay but, like, you can see that she is, like, suffering and fighting against it. This is why, uh, like, I mean, like, the the scene would still be bad to look at. Uh, by the scene, I mean the scenes later on. Would still be bad yeah. to look at, even if she was, a, like, just placid, right? But yeah. it's, it's, it's such a weird choice that they made her mm-hmm. the only one who's screaming and crying. Yeah, it definitely makes all of it a lot more disturbing to watch. And also her being in lingerie in the scene is also really disturbing because I was like, oh, he rapes her first. Great! Yeah. Sam starts yelling because he's seen the vision. He starts trying to get out of the Impala. And 
Dean, like, catches him as he starts falling again. Um, so now we're at the bridge and Anson is driving with Tracy in the passenger seat and she looks really scared and he starts like feeling her up and he says I take my ladies here they like it well I mean I like it so of course they do too Yay, I love when people say words and how words and sentences exist in the world. Um, so Tracy starts crying and begging to be let go, and he demands that she stops crying, which she does, but I guess it doesn't last. Yeah, like, she stops crying, sobbing, but tears are still yeah. falling out of her eyes. Yeah. So, he says, I see what you see in Andy. I mean, he's a genius. He's gonna be a great man someday. But he's my family, not yours. You can't have him. You're not gonna have anything after tonight. Okay. Okay. This is the part, I guess, where I bring up that if Andy is a Sam mirror, does that make Weber a Dean mirror? Oh dear. This is why, like, especially later on, like, Weber confronts Andy, right? And he mm -hmm. keeps on saying these things about family and all that, and I was like, all right. Damn. Oh dear. Oh, oh god. <laughs> I, I. I don't think it's the intention of the episode, especially not now, not when right. this aired the first time. But there is this kind of feeling um, later on where Dean is like, you know, with Ruby, he's like jealous of Ruby. Mm -hmm. When Sam lives a life in season eight, he gets angry at Sam for leaving him behind. So we, we do get vibes of Weber behavior from Dean later on. Yeah. Fun yeah. stuff. Fun stuff. Uh, Sam and Dean and Andy drive over to the bridge in the vision, and Sam tells Dean to stay back, and Dean's like, yeah, good call. I don't really want to be mind-controlled anymore. And Sam pulls out two guns and starts walking, but Andy stops him and says, I'm coming with you. And Sam says, Andy, no. Like an idiot? Like, you'd think that if your vision is a woman is mind controlled to death, you'd want someone to mind control her to not die with you. But I guess he just yeah. <laughs> wants to keep Andy out of it. Um, Andy says that if it's Tracy out there, then I'm coming. Okay, so in the car, um, Tracy and Weber are still there. And it is the beginnings of a rape scene. I'm just not gonna elaborate yeah. because I don't wanna, but that is yeah. what's happening. And uh, in the middle of it, he tells her that like, after all this is over, you go jump off that dam. Sam comes in and Weber like threatens him with his um, echo voice. But Sam, of course, unfazed, fucking slaps him. Good for him. And uh, Andy pulls. Andy is on the other side of the car, and gets Tracy out. Sam takes Weber out of the car as well, and Andy comes around and starts punching and kicking this guy. He's like, "I will kill you! I'm gonna kill you!" And Sam tries to stop him. Boo! Uh, prior to Andy kicking the shit out of this guy, Sam actually tapes his mouth closed. Because, you know, verbal cues is how they control people. So, when the next scene happens, which is Weber looks intently at Tracy. And Tracy, like, picks up a stick and fucking hits Sam in the head. It's a surprise. Because, like, oh my god, this guy can mind control, even without verbal cues. 
Weber stands up, pulls the duct tape out of his mouth, and Andy asks him, how did you do that? Weber says, you just gotta practice, bro. And I, I guess my, my, my wonder here is, like, how, how would Sam practice his skills? <laughs> Right? Um, like <laughs> he can't. Like <laughs> he literally can't. He doesn't know how to make it better. He doesn't know how to make his visions more accurate. And I was like, well, that's a bummer that like all of these people can practice their powers. And Sam was just like, I'm just sitting here. Lily you know? can't really practice her powers either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what Jake's powers is? Uh, super strength, right? Super strength, okay. So we got super strength, we get telekinesis, we get mind control, we get um just fucking kill people like with a touch, and then we get death visions. At least Lily's power yeah. can be a weapon. Like, you know, yeah. Sam's powers really are just well people are gonna die around me. <laughs> and if I can or cannot stop them, then you know, that's gotta yeah. be my problem. Sam really got the worst power. I can't believe yeah. Lucifer like looked at this like group of children and was like, I don't want the death touch one, I want the one who gets migraines. The Lucifer thing, I don't think it's uh related. Yeah. I don't mm -hmm. think I think it's separate from the um what what do you call these kids? Psychic, the psychic power kids. kids. Yeah. I think it's separate because the Lucifer thing is more uh, Mary and John were destined together to produce a viable offspring <laughs> type of situation. Yeah. Which also sucks, but... Wait, but then what was Azazel's goal in feeding everyone? I have no like, fucking like, idea. Like, for fun? Like, for yeah. fun? <laughs> he, he was just, like, fucking battle royaling these kids for funsies. Well, I guess we'll figure out later on. Maybe I'm yeah. just remembering. Yeah. Oh, also you didn't mention that when Tracy was attacking Sam with the stick, Andy uses his powers to tell her to stop. Yeah. At first he says, like, stop, like, normally. And then when it doesn't work, he tells her, stop it, using her, <laughs> as the transcript says, de demonic echo <laughs> voice, which I love. <sighs> anyway, Andy was about to attack Weber when Weber says, um, if you don't stop doing that, Tracy's gonna do a little flying. And we turn around and Tracy is standing on the edge of the dam. And Andy and Weber start talking, you know, like actual exposition talking. Mm -hmm. And Weber says the reason why she's why he is trying to kill Stacy. No, that's not her name. <laughs> <laughs> Why he's trying to kill Tracy is because she's trying to come in between them. And uh, he, he says, she's garbage. And I was like, oh my god, this guy's a fucking woman hater. And he yeah. says, all of them. And I was like, okay, he hates everyone equally. <laughs> At least <laughs> this guy <laughs> said, I mean, women's rights, women deserve to be hated as much as I hate other people. I think that him being a serial rapist makes him a woman hater, though. This guy doesn't get any passes. And then Andy was like, are you really this stupid? You learn you've got a twin, like, you call me up, you, you buy me a drink, you don't start killing people. And then this is the reveal. I think this mm -hmm. is like the most important part of the episode, which is that Weber reveals that he didn't want me to talk to you and andy asks who's he and weber reveals that yellow eyes has been talking to him dun 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 uh he yellow eyes has been talking to him in his dreams saying that he's special and that he's got big plans for him and for the both of them and that he told him that he has a brother andy dan starts hiding behind a tree and aiming a sniper at Anson and Andy continues asking like why did you kill our mom and why did you kill Dr. Jennings and Anson says because they split us up they ruined our lives Andy we could have been together this whole time instead of alone 
I couldn't let them do that. I couldn't let them get away with that. No. I... I don't really understand Anson at all. Yeah. Like, why... What is his deal? What are his motives? I guess we're supposed to feel here that Yellow Eyes has been feeding him, like, shit, yeah. I guess. He, like, I think one of the reasons why I wasn't compelled by this episode was because the villain, i.e. Weber, it's just, he's not compelling. Like, he doesn't make yeah. that much sense. He's just, like, cartoonishly evil. Everything yeah, he he's says like is, like, tweet. laughable because it makes no sense. Yeah, which is, like, I think the episode tries to acknowledge that by, you know, Andy saying, Are you stupid? Are you really this stupid? But still, even if you acknowledge it like that, like, it's still stupid. Like, his motives are yeah. still stupid, you know? Right. Because I feel like if we got a little bit more of his childhood, like, maybe if he was abused or, like, horrifically lonely, then I would get why he's trying so hard to have Andy as his brother and, like, try to exert control over him. But, like, we have nothing. Like, who cares if you have a twin? If I heard I had a twin, I would just go to sleep. Who cares? <laughs> His backstory is that he asked his mommy for, like, can I have a younger brother? And the mom was like, no. And then he was like, I'm going to be evil for the rest of my fucking life. So true. Just get a dog, dude. <laughs> Anson sees Dean. He says, I see you. Bye-bye. And apparently the bye-bye was enough of a demonic echo command to prompt Dean to try to kill himself. Bye bye is not specific, but all right. I mean, he, he can like mind control without. Yeah, words, that's so, like, true. You know. That's true. So he but was also, thinking. Like, uh huh. Does he have Does he have magic hearing abilities now too? Like, why can he hear Dean? I I don't know. Maybe Dean just stepped on a really loud twig, but it wasn't important to his journey. <laughs> uh Dean's about to shoot himself. Tracy is crying and about to die. And then we hear a gunshot and it's Andy has shot Anson in the back and Anson is dead. Oh, just to clarify, Anson is Weber. Because we're using yeah. different names. Yeah. Anyway, in it's morning now. And we're still at the bridge. And Andy is talking to some police officers. And he's telling them that, oh, Weber shot himself. And you all saw it happen. You know, demonic echo style. And the policemen are like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sam and Dean are looking at him. Sam says, oh, he's getting better at it already. Which, like, I don't know. I don't know if we see... I, like, I don't know what we see of Andy's powers again, but I hope the next time we see him... Uh, do, okay, do you, do you hope the next time we see him, he can mind control without words? Because that means he's been mind controlling he's been more and more and more. Right. Yeah, and maybe that's not a good thing. Yeah, so like maybe the next time we see him, his powers should be the same. So that that's evidence that he learned his lesson that, like, maybe his powers are not for good sometimes. Wow, hashtag nuance. <laughs> is, that, is that what this is? <laughs> anyway. Not on Supernatural. <laughs> As Andy keeps on walking towards Sam and Dean, he walks past Tracy, who avoids his eyes. And he tells this to Sam and Dean that she won't even look at him. And we're supposed to feel bad for Andy in this situation and like not that much for Tracy which pisses yeah. me off so fucking much yeah yeah and he says that the reason must be because he has never used her powers with her before but because he did last night she's scared of him now anyway Sam says well, we should be going. It doesn't even acknowledge that. That's fucking all. He's like, okay, cool, dude. Uh, we need to go now. 
And he hands him the smallest piece of paper possible. Literally, this piece of paper is fucking tiny. And he's like, I wrote my cell phone number there. You don't have to be alone in this, alright? If anything comes up, just call me. Andy asks what he's supposed to do now. And Dean says, you be good, Andy. Or we'll be back. <sighs> Jesus Christ, Dean. <laughs> what a trap! And like the whole episode, he was like, Oh, Andy is fine, Andy is good, like it's blah blah blah. Yeah. And and then now he's like, If you. I'm gonna fucking even kill you. Step, if you misstep in one direction, in one wrong direction, you're fucking dead, bro. And then uh, as Sam and Dean walk away, Sam says, I was right, wasn't I? That he was a killer. Dean says he's a hero. He said he saved his girlfriend's life. He saved my life. She's not his girlfriend and she has a name. I hope Dean dies and I hope everyone who wrote this episode dies. Sam says, uh, well, he wasted somebody still. Dean says, yeah, but he was pushed into it. And Sam says, maybe that's what the demon is doing, pushing us into things. Max Miller was pushed. I was pushed by Jessica's death. Dean's like gets fed up, ask what's the point of all this is. Sam says, right circumstances, everyone is capable of murder. Everyone. Sam continues on saying that uh, he heard Dean say to Andy when Andy forced him to tell the truth that he's just as scared of all this as Sam is. And Dean's like, uh, that was mind control. It's like being roofied. It doesn't count for I... Dean. Yeah, okay, but also, do you think Dean's been roofied? Like, what is the point of this line? Oh, uh, there, it's like heavily, like, there's like a story later on in the oh, show. Oh, right, 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 in the, in the Claire sex trafficking episode, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm not sure if, like, he does get drugged or he was threatened to get drugged in that story. But, yeah. Mm, I mean, it's sad that he's making jokes about it. Sorry, dude. Yeah. Sorry, dude. Dean uh, continues on that they're just gonna find the evil son of a bitch and kill it. And uh, Ellen rings them up and they go to the roadhouse. I'm so... I don't know where to talk about how pissed off I am about the Tracy storyline or if it even should be in the episode, but I feel like this is the last place that I can. I don't know. What should I do? You, you go do it. Okay. I guess there's a lot of things that I am upset about with how they handled Tracy's storyline. It's... I don't get the point of the rape scene. It just feels... Like, excessive, exploitative tragedy porn, especially with the fact that she's crying the whole time when everyone else was placid, and Anson just keeps talking, and he's, like, forcing her to unbutton her clothes and tells her to go slower for his- Like, it's just- it's so much detail, and, like, they, like, really make it clear how much she's being violated, and I don't think it's- necessarily bad to be like this is a bad thing that's happening to her because it is but i think the point when you do something like that is that you need that character to have some amount of depth beyond just being a victim the scene when anson and andy are fighting and basically he's like dangling tracy in front of andy like a toy going like Oh, if you don't do what I want, like, I'll drop her, is so... I don't... Just the image of these two brothers, like, fighting over this completely helpless girl who's, like, half undressed and is about to die is, like, really fucking awful to look at. Um, and it's just... And also, like, the very last scene with her, where she's, like, just crying in her blankets... Because the way Supernatural works as the show without nuance, where everyone looks into the camera and states the scenes, or states the themes, is that the characters that are done justice, I think, are the characters who get to monologue a bit about how they feel. Like, that's my standard of whether or not Supernatural views a character as a person. And the fact that Andy gets the ending monologue 
about how sad he is that his ex doesn't like him anymore because she almost got raped by his brother and he has the powers that his brother has and not like her at all getting to talk about her feelings or like do anything is just like really really disgusting to me and I hope Ben Edlund has a really bad life. Yeah, I guess that's all of it. I think you can make the argument um, that like it's bad because it's supposed to be bad. But like it didn't have to be that gratuitous, you know? Yeah, and she still could have gotten to be a character. Yeah, like if you s like the, the the first part of your um, statement is like, like yeah, Weber is supposed to be bad. That's why the whole scene was bad, etc. The the part that's like more egregious is the second part, which is that mm -hmm. they don't provide any character traits to Tracy other than. You know, she's a victim of this terrible thing that happens to her. And also, like, at the end, you're, you're supposed to feel bad for Andy, specifically, instead of her, who just went through this horrific thing. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, so we we're back at the roadhouse now. Sam and Dean are at the bar. Ellen's talking to them. Joe's about to come up to them, but Ellen sends her off to pick up another case of beer probably because she wants to keep Joe away from Dean no like she just Is doesn't that want the... Joe to listen to the case okay that makes more sense but I didn't get that okay so uh Ellen questions them about the events of their last hunt and Dean says that he's not going to tell her because it's a family thing. And Ellen says not anymore and says that she got all of Ash's research. And so you guys think that the demon was the one who burned down Andy's house and also your house. Sam says, yeah, we think so. And Dean's trying to hold him back from saying any more information while Sam seems down to collab with Ellen. Ellen asks why, and Dean says, none of your business. <laughs> and <laughs> Ellen says, mind your tongue with me, boy. And she says, this isn't just your war, this is war. Something big and bad's coming, and it's coming fast, and their side holds all the cards. At best, all we got is us together. No secrets or half-truths here. So I guess it's nice that they're setting up the season as like this war where they have these allies, but I don't know if that is what shakes out. I guess we'll see. Uh, so Sam finally reveals that there's people out there like Andy Gallagher, and then he makes a little face and he says, like me. He says, we all have some kind of ability, a psychic ability. I have visions. It's different for everybody. And the demon said that he had plans for people like us, but he doesn't know what the plans are. Ellen immediately jumps to, are these psychics out there dangerous? And Dean's like, no, not all of them. And Sam <laughs> says, some are. Some are very dangerous. Man, Sam is always is always the one more willing to give like monsters the benefit of the doubt until they look a little bit like Sam mirrors, and then he's like, "Go fucking kill them! Do it! Do it!" <laughs> so Sam says that the pattern isn't actually always there, because Anson never had a house fire. When he was a child, there was nothing out of the ordinary. So, Ellen says, Okay, so if there's others like him, then there'd be nothing in the system. We wouldn't be able to track all of them down. And Dean says, So who knows how many of them are really out there. Joe shows up again, and Ellen says, You'd better break out the whiskey instead. And the episode ends I love the pose that Joe makes at the end of this episode. Like she puts her hands at the back of her, the back of her hips, 
mm. like an old lady, you know? <laughs> yep. And I was like, yes, Joe, arthritis at age 21 writes. <laughs> uh, anyway, what do you think about this one? I hated it. What did you think? I didn't like it, but I don't think I hated it. Like, I just watched it and I was like, yeah, sure, I'm watching an episode of Supernatural, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't really have anything else to say. <laughs> yeah. Your your best line, worst line. What's your best line? I think I kind of liked Dean's whole truth spell moment where yeah. he says, yeah, he thinks you're a murderer and he's afraid that he's going to become one himself because you're all part of something that's terrible and I hope to hell that he's wrong, but I'm starting to get a little scared that he might be right. Like, sorry, bro. <laughs> sorry, all of you. Yeah, I, I like the when Sam says, like, right circumstances, everyone's capable of murder. Everyone, you know? Maybe that's what the demon's doing, pushing us, finding ways to break us. Yeah. And it, it's just like the concept that Sam's life is this one long manipulation to making him worse and worse and worse and worse. Yeah. And then, you know, he still ends up the way he ends up. It's like... Yeah. Well, what a sweet, sweet lad. Worst line? Um, I mean, probably just anything from the rape scene, but I don't really want to repeat it. I guess, like, I didn't like Andy and Weber's conversation about, like, their just entire conversation is so <laughs> weird. Like, it doesn't make any sense. And, like, yep. the fact that she's, that he is killing Tracy for being a romantic interest is so fucking funny to me because oh. like uh like it's basically what happens with dean and ruby right like you know right yeah and, and it's like i feel like dean uninhibited would have done the same thing <laughs> with ruby <laughs> and it's i don't know I, like like i said i don't think they intentionally paralleled weber with dean but it did happen end mm. up happening it's not not the line that i hate necessarily but it's just a line that i don't know i don't think it's the worst line i think the worst line is like similar to yours mm. but yeah okay so i'm db rating i'm not sure because we both did not like this episode but before but this plot heavy yeah and before i watched it i had high hopes because i feel like the general vibe that I got from Tumblr was that it was a good one. I don't know, I think I'm just gonna go 8.2 just like episodes 2 and 3 of season 2. I'll go 8 point... I feel like it would be higher because people like this episode. Why? <laughs> yeah. Why? It's so fucking... Like, I guess I like Andy. Yeah. That is true. Like. He is a char like he's not actually that charismatic, but he is like an entertaining character to some degree. He did steal Van uh, Paula. And, and he's he dating Cass. Paula. And he is dating Cass, so I'll I'll give this an eight point eight point three just to hedge our bets, as you like mm -hmm. to say. <laughs> Let me see. How you gonna treat me, Annie? Oh my God, it's what? an eight point five. No, why? Horrific time. Uh, that I'm having right now. Yeah, me too. Last episode well, was literally a seven point nine, a seven point yeah, eight. it was a seven point nine, and it was fine. It was a good episode yeah i'm tired guys <laughs> <laughs> i'm tired of imdb uh lying to us yeah one of this just says the app is entertaining and adds to the plot of sam's arc so true it does add to the sam's plot arc correct this one says by far my favorite episode for what for this episode is memorable because of Dean's slapstick comedy while trying not to do what is told via Andrew's mind control. I do agree that scene was very funny. And like, yeah. 
uh, I do. I remember it so vividly. Like watching it the first time, mm-hmm. I remember it vividly. So like, it must have st- like it stick to me for a reason, and the reason is because it's an entertaining scene. But like the rest of the episode doesn't make up for it. I feel, mm. like doesn't uh, live up to it. Yeah. Yeah. This one says that they liked the episode because Sam and Dean act like equals because. They're, like, both watching out for each other in different ways, which I guess is true? Sure. I'll take it. This is- someone says this is the best Psychic Kids episode. I- Nightmare was better. I think Nightmare is very upsetting, so people might be turned off from it, you know? Yeah. This one is also upsetting. It's also upsetting! (laughs) Yeah, I found this one more upsetting than Nightmare. I think it just, like, depends on your sensitivities. Andy is a nice example of how the show refused to treat all supernatural entities as evil. Uh, whatever. I don't uh, really care. <laughs> yeah, whatever. I don't care what any yeah, of these people have to, to me, say. They're all wrong. <laughs> to me, Andy is Cass's boyfriend, and that's it. So true. I think that's it for this episode of Bus Asian Beauties. Next time we'll be talking about season two, episode six, No Exit. Leave us a rating or review wherever you get your podcasts. Follow us on social media. We are on Twitter at twitter.com slash beauties podcast and on Tumblr at bustyasianbeautiespod.tumblr.com. Our official tag is babpod, B-A-B pod, And thank you to everyone who's donated to our Ko-fi at ko-fi.com slash bustyasianbeautiespod. You can email us any feedback, comments, or inquiries at bustyasianbeautiespod at gmail.com. See you guys next time. Bye. Bye!